Hey everyone, Bernadette here from The Daily Positive. I've got a guest expert that I've got um, joining me today. We're going to be talking about igniting self-healing and igniting more energy. So, hey to all of you. Let me know how you are. Let me know where you're joining from. It's great to be here with you. So the guest that I'm going to have with me today, we're just waiting for her to join the call, hopefully in a moment, is Dr. Kim Duramo. So Dr. Kim is a mind-body medicine physician. She was in osteopathic medicine and she was a board-certified emergency medicine physician. And Kim had an autoimmune disease which she healed herself and she specialises now in mind-body medicine. So I'm really excited to be able to have her with us live today. I'm just waiting for her to join. So Kim has written a book called The Mind Body Toolkit and her and I are on the same vibes. <laughs> so if you like the work that I do here at The Daily Positive, you'll really love Kim's energy and her work. She does a lot around centering into your body, um, being really present in your heart centre, tuning into your body, not resisting what's going on in your mind, not resisting what's going on in your life, as a way to kind of sink into presence and stillness and a loving energy with yourself is a really important part of healing your body. So her book that we're going to talk about once she joins, I'm just waiting for her to, to connect in with us, is um, called the Mind Body Toolkit and she shares in that 10 tools that you can use to start to ignite self-healing. So she's going to share one of those tools with us today and that book has been a bestseller. She's just released a second edition of it which she's added like meditations and videos and extra things to help people. So if you've been tuning into the recent IG vids and things that I've been doing here or you're on my YouTube channel and tuning in there, We've been focusing a lot this year on healing. Healing your body, healing emotions, healing your mind, healing trauma. I've had a lot of awesome guest experts joining me to um, share their wisdom and, and a lot of them are doctors that are now doing really awesome energy psychology and en energy medicine and I know it's been a really key part of me healing on my journey so I'm not sure where you guys are at if there's anything that you've been wanting to create healing in in terms of your mind your emotions your body your life and um, I've gone through healing two pretty chronic health conditions one lasted 12 years and one lasted over 20 years and understanding energy and healing the body and mindset was all a really important part of it and I think it's really interesting that it's for me it's very rarely one specific thing that creates healing and if you're looking to create emotional relief or psychological balance or physical healing like if you've got a chronic health condition and Kim helps people that have got things from autoimmune to chronic fatigue to um, anxiety and depression it's very rarely one one hit wonder golden nugget that creates the healing outcome. I find that it's often a combination of things and so it's really important not to, um, when we're sharing these ideas, say that we're as simple as just think differently or just find some peace and everything will be fine. There is usually a little bit of a journey that we go on and we learn different tools from different people and I know that that's been really important on my journey as I've learned from so many people from training in Psych K to using EFT or what people call tapping to using spiritual practices like Ho'oponopono and A Course in Miracles and other faith and spiritual tra traditions that I use through to breathing, conscious breathing exercises and meditation, there's so many different things that can add value and beauty on the path but from my conversations that I've had with people recently and I had a conversation with Dr. Lisa Rankin, we're going to talk to hopefully Dr. Kim today if she's joining us live, is that you really want to come to a place where you can be with your difficult emotions or be with your difficult thoughts and beliefs or be with the pain in your body or be with the pain that's going on in your life and not feel like you're wrong, not feel like it's wrong. Oh yay, Dr. Kim's here. Okay. And 
to be able to sit with what's going on and then from that place you're in a greater state of ease and grace to be able to create change and with that said let's have dr kim join us you just see i haven't done an ig live with someone else before so she will be joining into our screen in just a minute oh it's always so here funny she, here she <laughs> is <laughs> I was like sitting there staring at your page waiting for like a notification to pop up. And then I just noticed the little red thing that said live. I was like, oh, she is. <laughs> Don't worry. I can sit and talk for, I can talk for hours. <laughs> oh, it's great to see you. It's good to see you too. So I've been sharing with everyone about your background and that you've got your new book out and that we're going to be talking today about igniting self-healing and energy. Yes, yes. So, do you want to just like just dive in and share your joy? Because I always say to people, like, since I've met you, your energy is just contagious. I love being in your presence, and oh, your work has just provides everyone such a relief. Just hearing you talk about, we can just stop trying to figure everything out. We can just sit in and feel in and breathe in. So, please tell us how we can ignite self healing and energy, and then we can talk about your book. Thank you. Well, it's powerful. We have a lot more power within us than we usually think we do or what we're really we're taught to think, you know, we're taught to look outside of ourselves and we actually have like, we're sitting on a gold mine, whether it's for your health or your wealth or your relationships or whatever it is that your heart is desiring, it's available. But the biggest key is how do I let go and allow because, because even just softening your body increases your receptivity. How do I allow this to come into my life? And what people usually think of, and I know what I did too, was like, how do I heal myself? How do I heal myself? I understood mm -hmm. the mind-body connection. I understood the body healed itself. But I was trying so hard to make that happen. And I really didn't understand it until I went through that myself and learned, because I had to learn, um, how do we activate that? How do we actually let that be ignited? So, you know, I, I've been a physician for, for many years in the emergency room. That was my... Um, residency training and trauma critical care medicine but even before that had an understanding about the body's ability to heal itself the mind-body connection and so it was always my vision to bring that into the forefront of what I was doing in medicine um, but I saw so many people suffering and struggling coming into the ER with acute issues but it was like on top of these chronic underlying issues or on top of these emotional suppressions or on top of um, their underlying state of judging their body hating their body resisting and even when there were very severe emergent issues there were also these underlying um, things that were suppressing them from healing <laughs> and and so when I sort of began to have to apply this for myself because I experienced an autoimmune disease when I was in medical school. Um, until then, it was just information. And it was like, okay, great, let, let's go make that happen. But when I went through that myself, I realized that the problem was trying to make it happen. That The problem was yeah. that I was trying to make my life happen. That was the problem. That was what was making me sick. That was what was suppressing my health and causing so much pain. So that, that's kind of the first thing I think we should we'd talk about. And I know you have amazing experience with this as well. <laughs> Let go yeah. and allow. So I think yes. that's the biggest thing for, for health, wealth, and obviously like you guys have shown for life. Yeah, I, th I just, just on that note, like it really resonates and I really want anyone to hear that as trying to heal. I just feel you so bad because it's like the trying to heal. Like when I was trying to heal endometriosis and chronic um, chronic menstrual pain, like chronic to the point of vomiting on the floor pain. For 20-something years, I had this problem. I was like trying to get the right, eat, eat the right way, trying to reduce my stress, trying to heal my adrenals, trying to do this. Fearful you're going to get it wrong. Fearful you're going to eat the wrong thing or you're going to, you know, stress yourself out too much. And you just end up trying so hard to fix it that the trying hard to fix it causes you more stress and you get further and further and further away from the healing because you're doing what you think you should do by trying so hard. Yes. Well, that's what I see with so many people with chronic illness who are being proactive is that they're being taught you have to do this and you can't do that and you can't eat that and you've got to take this and it becomes more stuff to work on. Like work Yeah, and someone just hard. asked, someone just asked a question. They said, how do you heal without suppressing or ignoring what's going on like so this is the whole key is that 
Um, and you know what? I was on an interview today with Gene Monstrat, who does a lot of EFT tapping, and he said it so well. Well, the first thing he said was, I, he said, I always just try, remember, my body is a healing machine. But the other thing he said, what really hit the nail on the head was, all right, hold on, where was it? Or took, these are my notes. <laughs> he said, where is that? All transformation starts by acknowledging what is. Fully mm -hmm. articulated emotions are the start of that release. Fully articulated emotions. And that's why, like, for those of you who've followed me before, or done any, like, EFT tapping, you actually acknowledge what's happening. You know, my, my, my instant elevation tool, which this is, like, one of the first things in the mind-body toolkit, the ABC tool, the first part of it is get your attention and presence in your body. Because your body can only live in the now. It can't live in the past. It can't live in the future. It can't live outside of you. It can only live in the now. And it will register what's actually happening now. So when you bring your presence, that's A in part of the ABC tool, awareness. You bring your awareness to your body. You're going to feel it. You're going to feel the tension and the stress and the pain and the grief and like everything that has been suppressed. People think that's the problem. No, the problem is when you're suppressing it, when you start to, and then the second part is B, you breathe it. When you start to presence it, it's going to come up. It's going to freaking intensify. That is not the problem. Use your breath, soften your shoulders, put, talk to your body, body, it's okay. That's like the other pieces that I, that I share in the book. It's super easy. Your body knows how to do this. It knows how to release. It knows exactly what it is. You don't have to even determine that and let me figure what the real trauma is that I'm suppressing. So yeah, the, the back, the bhakti babe, do not ignore, do the exact opposite. The truth is I'm actually feeling fill in the blank. The truth is mm -hmm. I actually think, cause these are all the things people say, don't think that don't think negative. No, no. I actually think this. these are the beliefs going through right now. Whoa. Let me just call mm -hmm. it out. Let me just feel it and acknowledge it. Yeah. 100%, 100%. And interestingly, when we're talking about not trying so hard, the difference is instead of going outside of me, I need to find the answer out there. What you're talking about is releasing and coming inside and, and acknowledging what's going on and allowing what's going on and feel. And I 100% agree with you to name the, like, be still with yourself and breathe and what are you actually feeling and call it for what it is. Because yeah. earlier this year on healing, some healing that I did, I had rage come up. And I was like, if you had said to me that I have rage inside me, I was like, I don't have rage. I'm like, totally scared. Oh my gosh, the amount of rage I had suppressed inside of me from a long time ago. All part of yeah, the Yeah, and if you process. don't make it wrong, it will just move. If you don't make it wrong, because what happens is, why am I feeling this now? I shouldn't be feeling this. Hey, this is highly inconvenient. Hey, I don't have a reason. I guess this is wrong. And then we like medicate it. No, no, that is the medicine. Your presence is the medicine. Let it, let it come. Let it have space. Because you know what? He, how he actually said, he said, fully articulated emotions are short-lived. Because they'll move. Yes. Let the energy move. It's going to move. Your body is genius. It is a freaking miracle. And I swear, because I've seen so many people who are like, no, 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 you don't understand my situation. But it's always the same. When we give it breath, we give it life, it moves. It's all it, p chronic pain. It's energy that's stuck in the body. Chronic illness is suppressed emotions that are keeping the body from healing. I'm not saying all yes. illness is wrong. I'm not saying that. Like, we all need an exit strategy. We're not meant to be here forever. Illness is not wrong. But most people who are trying to get better and not getting better, this is what I've seen. I've seen it 100% of the time. There are these old yeah. emotions, keeping those patterns physically in place and actually making the body sick. So whether you have a diagnosis or you have this physical thing, if it's not getting better, you're like, I'm miserable. There's something else going on 100% of the time. Yeah, so good, so good. So um, what we normally, what I normally find and what I think you're saying also is that people will do two things. One, I, I'm meant to be happy, I'm meant to be positive, I'm meant to be peaceful. I can't, I can't have that suppress, suppress and you try to plaster on. It doesn't work. You have to look at the emotions. And two is people being afraid of their feelings. Like if I take the lid off this can of rage or I look at this pain about yes. my parents or I look at the shame of my divorce or whatever, it's going to be too much. I can't handle it. I can't look at it. 
but I really want to heal, so I'm going to go over and do the stuff, oh but God. I'm not going to look at the emotions. So yes. what do you say to that? It's amazing, especially with women I've worked with. We've really been taught to suppress our expression. So then instead of like, ah, or like, Ugh, or whatever it's going to look like, right? heart open, willing to feel it, willing to express, energy moves. It ends up looking like, no, I'm fine. Or, yeah, I'm okay. It's like, oh, you're not fooling me. Y you can feel the tension in the body. Or with their partners or sexually, they're like, oh, I just don't feel like it. Well, why you don't feel like it is because you're walking around with, I'm fine. Instead of like, what the F are you really feeling? What is actually happening in there? If you have a partner who doesn't want to know what's actually happening in there, you don't have a partner who's really partnering with you to explore yourself and awaken. In a true partner she's just frozen so dr kim's book is on sale right now her new edition second edition of her book mind body toolkit is on sale for 99 cents on kindle and if you go to the link in my bio after this live you'll find a link that you can go and grab that book while it's on special until this weekend also dr kim is a proponent for and i'm a huge advocate of eft tapping emotional freedom techniques tapping i also love things like emotion code um, conscious deep diaphragmatic breathing meditation practices so when we're talking about feeling into emotions acknowledging emotions and allowing emotions it's not as complicated as it might sound sometimes it's as simple as sitting down closing your eyes breathing into your body and noticing what your body's feeling and noticing what emotions you're sensing and maybe having a journal there and writing it down and then doing some breathing into that place. Like, for example, I'll sit with people in coaching sometimes and they'll be saying, you know, I just something doesn't feel right, um, things aren't going right in my life. If we tune in, there might be like a self-doubt and it might be that it's, where do you feel that in your body? It might be, I feel it in my stomach and it feels like a knot in my stomach or I feel grief and it feels like a tightness in my heart. And so you notice what you're feeling, you name the feeling, you might be able to give it a color, it might have a sensation to it, it might have a temperature. Usually you'll notice it somewhere in the body. I feel anger in my shoulder, I feel stress in my neck or whatever it is and you name it and then breathing into that. Don't, you're not wrong for having your feelings. There's nothing wrong with your feelings, there's nothing wrong with you, there's nothing wrong with your life. This is all part of it. So. Here's Dr. Kim back again. Let's just get her to join. Here we go. She'll be back with us in one second. Okay, and then we can jump back into Dr. Kim sharing about her tips for this. Perfect, you're back with us. <laughs> Will you believe my phone overheated? Oh, you've, been, you've just been so busy on there this I, morning. I, I would you on IG Live on your channel. <laughs> I had it leaning on my computer. And the thing really over oh, okay. the and, and, and then better. I tried to get in on my computer and it said, We sent a text to your phone. I'm like, oh. So I threw my phone in the freezer. <sighs> oh my gosh, I love it. Well, we love you. We're still here waiting for you for your wisdom. So please do share more with us. So we've been talking about emotion, it's energy and motion. It wants to move, it needs to move. It has to move. So do you want to give something people like a really specific tool that they could take away to be practicing yeah. to help their self healing? Yes, the, the first piece is you got to trust yourself. Because like I was sharing a, a minute before when it happened, um, we ha women especially, we have a lot of energy coursing through the body. Men too, we both have a feminine and a masculine side. If we suppress that, it creates so much disturbance, inflammation, overheating, like just happened here. <laughs> And the body can't function how it was designed. So if we begin to honor what we feel and give it expression, so whether it's journaling, whether it's movement, whether it's ah, voicing it, um, let the energy move. So that's the first one, like tune in. You gotta bring your presence mm -hmm. within. And that, that's kind of always bring it back to the ABC tool because that, that awareness, bringing your awareness to your body, your body will inform you. So that, that's kind of the first piece is like, okay, I'm here, not just here up in my head, pretending everything's fine, but actually suppressing it all. Like breathe all the way down to your belt, belly, mm -hmm. all the way down to your pelvis, all the way down to your feet. Let yourself presence throughout your whole body. And then what, what, it, what is actually happening? Whoa, I feel numb. That's what a lot of people will tell me first. I feel numb. I don't feel anything. Okay, so don't make that wrong. Because that's another thing. What's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? Right? Your brain will pick it up. I promise you. 
So that so that's the first thing is like tune in and allow expression to happen. Your mind's gonna say, no, no, it will be too much, or oh, you can't do that, or why do you feel this? You have to understand why, right? No, 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 you don't even understand anything. And that's the feminine aspect is the unknown. <laughs> the, uh, the um, un not linear, you're not the linear part of you, it's the part that's totally non-linear. Let it move anyway. So find that, that connection and let it be expressed either through, you know, even just, what we're doing, we're creating something, sharing our truth, letting our verse, voice be heard. Mm -hmm. What are you doing in your work? Are you doing work that's like, oh, this isn't really what I would really be saying in the world if I, if I shared my deepest truth. What are you doing in your partnership? I know for me, a lot of times, um, I don't want to share with him what's actually happening in my body. What's actually happening in my body, I judge it. Oh, no, that's mean. I shouldn't say that. I should just be nice. I should just go with the flow. I should not ruin the moment. No, be willing to ruin the moment because when you share what's actually coming up in you, it will enhance the moment and all, always to let emotion come through is you got to be aware and check in and you've got to let open up the gates, let open up the floodgates so that what's ready to come through. Can come through. Our country is oh, sorry. A lot is ready to come through here. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the, what's the C in ABC? A is awareness, bringing the awareness into the body. B is breath, bringing the breath to wherever we're noticing tension in the body. What is the C? The C is conscious choice. C this is like Perfect. the part that's the easiest and the least significant, but this is the one that gets the most attention. Like most people who are like, heal yourself, they're doing this conscious choice, like do affirmations or be positive, you know, like the daily positive, people will take that and they'll try to like, I should just be positive. That's not even what you're saying. Mm -hmm. You're saying it's all positive. It's beautiful, be beautiful, be all that you are. And you're assisting people with enhancing that. But the C is like, it doesn't matter what the C is if you don't do the AB. If you don't get present in your body and awaken and actually shift your yes. breathing, out of the fight or flight breathing that is suppressive and into the I am willing to breathe all of it and let all of it come through. So C is like, I consciously choose to love myself more. I consciously choose to nurture myself. Maybe I'll use some EFT. Maybe I will um, take a bath. Maybe I will go and like move and dance. Um, what is the conscious choice? What will create the most here? One of the most powerful ones I have for C is ask a better question. You know, the book, this is really what the book is filled with is like, how do you shift to become more awakened? And then what's your conscious choice? Where's your power? How do you access that? 10 things you can do anytime, anywhere to access that. So one of them is ask better questions. How can this be the best thing that ever happened for me? How could, you know, my phone overheats in the middle of the interview and it's all discombobulated. How could this be the best thing? You'll have the awareness right away. I know one thing that's the best thing is it, it, I want people to be able to relate to me and know this is in them. I want, I want to help them awaken. This is in them. I'm not special. I'm not perfect. I don't have it, quote, all together at all, but I'm real. And, it, and because I'm willing to be fully alive, it is everything. It is wealth. It is health. It is vitality. So it's perfect that th it didn't go as planned because it lets people see how you roll with the flow. <laughs> I love you so much. Oh my God. And if you are one thing, you are real. And I just, you, and because you're so real, your energy is just is contagious and you're very magnetic. And your work is so powerful because it's relatable and it's so easy. Like you, I listen to you and I'm like, Oh, yeah, like put down the encyclopedia of 12 psychology medical healing books and like just ABC it, people. But I think the thing is, is that the C bit, most people are just jumping to conscious choice. Oh, I'm just going to eat better. I'm just going to eat differently. I'm just going to be nicer to myself. Yes. And this, the, and it's not just awareness because people go, well, I'm aware that I'm upset with my husband. I'm aware that I don't take care of my body. I'm aware that whatever. But it's not that it's like, awareness of the feelings and where they're sitting in your body and where the tension is and 
being able to breathe into that. And someone asked a question before, and I've just written it down. I wondered if you could give your take on it. I talked a little bit when you were offline about this, about different techniques I love for this. But what's the best way, in your view, to move emotion? Oh, yeah. So we can talk about what we talked about with A, B, C, because I do it every day. If I feel something that's not comfortable, whether it's, oh, why is this thing happening? It's not working out for me outside me or it's like oh there's some discord inside me my husband just said this and i'm all fired up whatever it is i relax my pelvis and i allow the breath to come all the way down to my pelvis and it may be that who knows where the energy is right because when you're fired up you you don't really know <laughs> you're like ah. Oh. so i'm like wherever it is in my body all the way down to my my base i let everything soften and I breathe willingly to actually bring it up. I let it come up. I feel it. I, I breathe into it. If I feel it in a specific area, I'll breathe right there. But either way, I relax my pelvis and I let the breath fill the whole container. And I do 10 of those without expectation, without trying to make it different. Actually, just let me give my body this breath. And then I'll do 10 of those because today there's been a few things coming up for me today too. And they're little nigglets, like sneaky little things that if you don't pay a lot of attention, you're just like, oh, I'll just distract enough throughout the day and I won't mm -hmm. notice. But no, this is an opportunity to make more space in myself for love, for, for light, for truth to shine through, for the embodiment of my wholeness. So I'll thank it and then I'll soften my body and I breathe not to get rid of it, which is the biggest thing where people go wrong. I breathe to ask it to come up, ask it to intensify, get curious about it. I'll breathe to lean into it, mm -hmm. to experience it more. And then 10 breaths to just let the breath flush through and let the body do what it will. Wow. And how refreshing is that? How refreshing is it to be like, I'm going to just breathe. I'm not, I'm not trying to get rid of it. I'm not trying to do anything. I can just sit here and breathe and allow it to come up and allow it to move and trust that my body will flush it and it will just deal with it. But I'm not trying to get rid of it. Yes, and it's going to be in its own timeline. Because mm -hmm. if I'm like, well, I did those 10 breaths, didn't happen. Oh, no, no. You are being given the opportunity the gift of meeting yourself more fully in this moment and if yourself is in that emotional pain that's what you're meeting guess what you don't get to yeah. fix it and of course like through showing up that way that is what lets it flesh out that is what lets it be taken care of lets everything be taken care of but not necessarily in your timeline which that's the yeah. part that can get a little glitchy yeah, and I think also as we as we practice these things and people might say, well, it's not as simple as that because I'll just do that and then I'll still have the pain or I'll still have the thing or there's something magical happens. I think it's like the mystery of life is like when you allow yourself to sit with what is actually going on and really let yourself breathe into the moment. Um, maybe this is happening for me, not to me. Maybe I don't need to fix this. Maybe I need to just breathe and be with this is that sometimes when we can sit back in that space, the right people, the right information, the right book, the right something starts to show up. Yes. Where you don't have to try really hard to find the thing. You can end yes. up through synchronicity and mystery and flow of life. Yes. Coming to what you need when you need it. Yes. And if the thing is coming and you're like, you're grasping, you're grasping, the link isn't working, the money's not showing up, and you're like, all right, you know what? Let me just pause and just remember I receive all things with grace and ease. I already am whole and complete. When you come into that space first, there'll be more clarity. And it literally like parts the sea so that the things that are really here for you will come effortlessly. I have a lot of people that get glitch up with that one. They're like, I'm trying and I'm doing this and I'm doing that and I don't have money and it's not working. Always like, whoa, 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 go back to A, bring my awareness to my body, B, 10 slow deep breaths relax the shoulders so the breath goes to the belly relax the pelvis you'll feel the breath come all the way down 
and then see, right? What's my conscious choice? Oh, wait, let me back off of this thing. Oh, let me get out of that relationship. Because until you do A and B, you don't have the clarity. So who knows? Yeah. You, know, you just, you're shooting in the dark. <laughs> yeah, or well, you're making choices from the blocked up stress or the, the rage or the whatever it is. The choices are coming kind of like trying to get through that dark cloud of stuff. And so you never really feel like you're trusting your choice or that you're making the right choice. Yes. And that's why so many people, so. they have like a chronic illness and they're like, well, what's the message? What's the message? No, no, you can't go to see first. You got to do, <laughs> you got to get present without agenda because the message is there. Okay. Your body's like infinite wisdom. It's there. Okay. Don't make it wrong. You're the one not showing up fully because you have this agenda and attachment. So when I finally was willing to like stop trying to make the symptoms go away and I was willing to actually meet what was there, the symptoms went away. Like in days, it was so fast. But it's a tricky one wow. because attachment, oh my gosh, it can just take us over. Can I use the same time to get rid of premenopausal acne? Yes, 100%. Anything that rebalances your hormones, your cortisol level, your um, all of your inflammatory cascade, rebalances your neurotransmitters. It's all of it. Your immune system, your digestive system um, will help with any of these chronic issues you're dealing with. This is the number one thing that's shown to be the most powerful thing in medicine. Not, well, you know, if it's really bad, of course you got to use medication, but then, you know, let's try this other thing too if nothing works. No, it's the opposite. This is 99% of it. And then, yes, when you're in that space, you're like, I'm present, I'm breathing, boom. I'm going to take this medication. I'm going to have that procedure. I'm going to go do this thing. Like, you've got to let yourself get connected first. So that is so powerful. You're so the A, B first, and then the C for the choice of what do I want to do? What changes do I want, need to make in my life? What is my intuition telling me? Do I what medical procedure does or doesn't serve me if it, I'm it, leading my own healthcare team? This is the thing. Right? Here's someone saying, look into it. It being strep or Epstein Barr virus, medicalmedium.com. Right, that's great. Those those are great resources. But when we're in fight or flight, nothing will work you might get a hit and you feel better and you escape your pain for a few minutes and it comes back i have thousands of people who are like trying to medical medium it trying to get the answer oh it's epstein bar okay all i have to do is kill epstein bar but they're still in the same frequency they haven't adjusted in the a b part of the equation they are still in the fre same frequency they will always continue to get the same result no matter how powerful the medicine no matter how much they try no matter how they do these enlightened things, it will not make a difference. Until you shift your consciousness, nothing can yeah. show up differently. And it's like, again, still, there's like, it's mind boggling. When you want to fi fix something, heal something, or do something, and you look in the world, there are thousands of people saying, I've got the answer, I've got the answer, I've got the answer. Come to me, I've got the answer. And it's like, well, if you've all got the answer and it's all different, like it's so confusing and it's so stressful when you're already not feeling well. And I just love what you do about <clears throat> you just really sit back because you, you're connected with all of creation from a consciousness point of view. This has to be aligned, right? There has to be a stillness and a presence here. If we, if we like intuition is the greatest driving force right i believe we have answers to our own questions if we can sit into it but if you have all of the emotions and you have all the strain and the stress it covers it up so that's what i like about what you share is that if we bring awareness to it and we breathe into it and we allow it it can flush through and it can move and underneath that we have answers to our questions which is when you say see conscious choice ask better questions once you're calm and you've allowed these things you can ask a question your wisdom can come up with powerful answers once you've yes. gone through those first two years mm -hmm. yeah and i want to share with people where they can get the book this is available today yes. <laughs> started starting today at drkimd.com forward slash book it's on amazon it's on all major booksellers the kindle version is 99 cents and that's just this week i think just uh, the next several days yeah. um and the regular version is is on their hardcover or soft cover but this has 10 tools you can use anytime anywhere to awaken your consciousness, activate healing in your body, and reverse disease. So I am really excited to be sharing some of these tools because this is how your system works. It's like 
Mind Body 101, you have the power in you. And there are amazing resources out there between intuitives or even coaches or, you know, supplements, diets, like it's great. But what I have seen a hundred percent of the time is when people have illness, that's not getting better, no matter what they do. This is the thing. This is the underlying, when you shift your consciousness, everything will change. Boom. Resources will fly in and you have the energy to do them effortlessly. Or you have the money and you're like, boom, I'm moving forward with this. Things occur to you differently. You have different awarenesses and yeah, your body's entire chemistry changes. So people are asking about, you know, hormonal uh, acne, different problems people have. I had women with hot flashes, um, infertility, severe PMS, um, anxiety, depression, physical things like severe psoriasis, a lot of inflammatory conditions, autoimmune conditions. Your body is listening. Your cells are listening. And you can access this ignition. Like I said before, um, your system is a healing machine. If you can soften 2%, you allow it to do what it was designed to do. Just tell your body today, body, I'm ready to let you do what you're designed to do. So perfect. And for anyone who's joining us, like they're asking, some people are asking, can we get a replay of this? So I'm going to um, download this and this will be on IGTV so that you absolutely people can watch this on replay. And I think, you know, I've heard people say before about healing, I'll oh, just shift your consciousness. Oh yeah. And it's like, and, and then that becomes, Doctor, can that becomes a whole thing? Oh, so hang on a minute. I've stopped trying to heal my condition. Now I'm gonna now I'm gonna shift my consciousness, and it becomes another thing. Now I have to read a million books to figure out how to do that. Yeah. But I love what you're saying. Just A B. Just yeah. awareness, breathing, sitting, thinking, ask better questions, and that is enough. Yeah. To start to create that shift in energy. Yeah. So simple. Yeah. Back off whatever is feeling like pushing a boulder up the hill. Back off. Yes. Yes. Oh, and you know what? That's been a, yeah, sorry, go ahead. That's that's been a um a theme for this year for me is as soon as something doesn't feel good, it's like no. Like like no. Absolutely unacceptable. I like I refuse to tolerate it anymore. Anything at all, doesn't matter whether it's work or personal life. If something doesn't feel good, something is not right and it's a sign to stand the right back and take your hands off. And I think we don't we don't get permission often in life or we don't grow up knowing yes. that we can do that. We don't grow up with that. So we don't give ourselves the permission. Mm. So what if you give yeah. yourself the permission to, 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 to honor yourself fully? What if you refuse to make yourself wrong under any circumstances? What if you refuse to make what's happening wrong under any circumstances? I, I've got this whole, um, community of other practitioners that I'm connected with you know, here in our local community who are, really upset about a lot of the restrictions that are happening a lot of the ways they're being told you're not allowed to say you have a, a solutions for you know for any illness like like viral illness mm -hmm. you're not allowed to say you can support the immune system and they're like well, what the heck am i doing then why are we being suppressed this way but they're getting really flared up and fired up and we've got to fight this and we've got to take this action and i'm not saying don't be proactive in your life come back first to like, whoa, is that easeful for me? Or is that just me staying busy and feeling productive, but running on a hamster wheel to nowhere? Because you lose all your power when you're in your operating in frustration, anger, overwhelm. You lose all of it. You have no power. And sometimes the greatest power you can have is just to be still and know and stop running the hamster wheel and take 10 breaths and do nothing else. It's not easy to do that. You know, we don't want to sit with ourselves sometimes. And they're right there. We don't want to sit with ourselves. Like someone just said, I'm sitting deep breathing while I'm listening to this and tears of sadness is just coming up. Yes, your sadness is a message. Your sadness is valid. Your sadness is not Energy wrong. Clearing. You are not wrong. Like let, let it come up. It wants to flush itself out. Sometimes we don't even know what we're sad about. Sometimes we don't even know what we're ashamed about. But it's there, so let it be expressed. Let it come up. Let it come out. Whether it's on your own, whether it's through what Kim's talking about, awareness breathing, whether it's talking to someone, whether it's journaling, it's so important to let these things come up and come out. And I think I hear you talking about, like, no to the pushing and no to the forcing and, you know, being able to come back and make ease and um, flow a priority. And I think when you have gotten to a point in your life where you've tried trying hard and forcing and 
it's not worked and it's caused you so much pain, yeah. that's when you're like, I'm never going, I'm just not, like, oh, I've yeah. done that. And yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm never going so down. much down more laugh in my life <laughs> that I was, like, building up debt on a momentary basis. I'm like, well, this is not supposed to be happening like this. And I had to finally let go of the wheel. So, you know, where are you pushing in your life and where are you? Someone said, how do we just not make it happen? You know, it's, it's so difficult. Yeah. But the reason it's difficult is because I don't always want to sit with what is. Guess where all my power lies? In the now wh where, with what is. I just did 100 days of sitting in meditation for an hour a day. Just, you know, no agenda. Sit in stillness to meet myself more fully, to connect with myself more fully. And I, and I actually feel like I want to keep going because um, – I created so much peace and stillness and created so much amazing change in my life. Like all the things I was wanting to see show up or where I had like craving for this. Why isn't this happening? It's all, it's resolved. It's, I don't feel that anymore. Or things have come to fruition in really beautiful ways. Like every moment I'm seeing more and more of that in my life, my relationship, my um, work. It's um, just because I, I knew like the power's in me. What am I doing out there? What if I put more energy into meeting myself more fully? That's where the, the real power is. And that's where healing comes from. So for yellow back, it's difficult not to make it happen and fix it, but pause on that and say, wait a minute, what if I do it anyway? What am I actually meeting in this moment that makes meeting this moment so difficult? Well, what if I'm willing to mm -hmm. just do it anyway? And when you realize how much it's going to resolve, you'll do it. So beautiful. And also just a final note is that, um, you know, you're so honest before. I'm not perfect. I'm not, like, I'm not, I'm just figuring this out and I'm sharing what I know works for people. And I think that's really important for people to hear is that everybody has difficult emotions. Nobody has it figured out. Everybody's just trying to, <laughs> trying to do their, yeah. trying to do their best. So if you, if you do what Kim says and you do the awareness of breathing and you meet yourself, and in the moment of meeting yourself fully, really difficult stuff comes up and you're feeling all of these horrible, uncomfortable feelings. Welcome to being human. Yeah. You beautiful, messy, glorious, messy human yeah. soul, spirit, goodness. Like, welcome to the right. Yeah. It is messy. Well, and the, and the, the thing with like it, though, is your willingness to meet the, quote, messy thing or painful thing is what makes it more fluid, is what makes it joyful, is what makes it, like, oh, this is, this is okay, like, makes the ride super smooth and flowy. So... I used, to, I used to really not like when people be like, oh, yeah, well, you know, welcome to life. That's just how it's going to be. And I took it that way. I didn't understand, like, mm -hmm. no, you're actually allowing density to freaking release so that yes. everything you've been asking for comes in. You've seen it in your life. You're like, I don't want to do this yes. job. I'm miserable. And you're like, what if I step out of this? Could my life really be created for me? Could this really be ab yeah. abundant and effortless? And now you're living that life. So then you choose it even more boldly and courageously. But it's still a moment to moment thing of like density is going to arise and you either suppress it or you embrace it. The more you learn mm -hmm. and choose to keep embracing it, the more abundant flow keeps coming through. Yeah, and it's like a note of like you talk about letting energy move. So when something comes up for me now, even if it's like a little shadow, I feel like not right, but I don't know what it is. I'm like, what is that? Like, what do you want? Like, who, what's your name? It's a weird feeling and just move. And you want to, you know, it's that I really feel like we are channels for energy, constant, yeah. spiritual, divine, creative, intellectual energy just wanting to flow. And I think there's not enough of the permission for people to allow that to happen because we're so concerned about being right, being good, looking right, looking good. Yeah. And yeah, I really appreciate what you're talking about there is it's not just embracing life as messy. It's like right. allowing that to come up and then it flushes out. Yeah. And what's left is spaciousness. Yes. Things to because if you remember that your system is a healing machine, it will take care of that for you. It will, it will resolve that. Mm -hmm. All you got to do is physically soften. Physically, just 2% more physically soften. 2% more, breathe a little bit more fully. That's it. It will happen. You will see it. And then your wisdom comes in more. And you're like, oh, wait a minute. I have my own clarity. I know what she's talking about. You'll have your own clarity and know from the inside out. But if you're still in your own tension and barriers, 
what I'm saying, it will be like, what is she talking about? Well, how do I do it? Well, I don't know. What, what, what does she mean? Don't try, but I'm trying. Wait, how do I stop trying? You're still in the mind. Mm -hmm. So if all you do today is throughout the day, soften your body and breathe more mm -hmm. fully, you will see the miracles happen. It's Beautiful. Everything. That's a perfect. That's a perfect note to end on. And I want everyone to please, there's a, you can go to Dr. Kim's Instagram if you want off this. You can go to the link in my bio, which goes direct to her book on Amazon uh, for the Kindle, which is on special right now. I just got my copy before the call. Okay. Um, so you can get the Kindle book for 99 cents. It's on special now. It's the second edition just being released of Mind Body Toolkit with 10 tools for igniting self-healing and more energy. It's been so awesome having you here. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, if any of you already have the book, this is updated with new material in it. And there's also bonuses for audios, guided meditation, some guided exercises and videos. Just the things that are really meant the most for me and how do I let energy move? How do I keep expanding in abundance and health, wealth, vitality? We are going to always keep expanding. So we can either learn to flow with that so we live a joyful life or keep trying to control it, <laughs> which you yeah, actually, yeah, we're going to make another <laughs> choice. Well, the link is drkimd.com forward slash book. And I look forward to hearing more from, from all of you guys here and, and how you, uh, how you receive the book. Thank you for all the love. I love your book. Awesome. Books. So good. So good. I can't oh. wait to start reading it. I'm excited to learn more from you. Thank you so much, Kim. Oh, it's so great to see you. Beautiful. It's so, so great to be able to, to do this and connect. You're amazing. I love what you're doing. <laughs> All right. And I want to share too, like, you know, where you're at and where you've grounded your own presence is a powerful place. Like you have had the courage and that actually creates a massive cellular change, a, a, a electromagnetic change. That's what allows you to contribute so much to other people, right? The content might be like someone else is saying the exact same thing. It, it doesn't matter. It's your presence. That's the thing that really allows people to receive the awakening for themselves. And you're definitely embodying that presence. That's why I was so glad we met and so connected to what you're doing. So just way to go. It takes massive courage to do that, but it really matters. It matters to me. And I know it matters to the people who see you and hear you. Big love. Love you so much. Thank you. Yeah, love you too. I'm going to see you meet you someday. I think I might end up coming to meet Yeah. I know. I can't wait. Right, you're Colorado. I want to come over. My brother's in Colorado. I'm, it's like, please, please let us travel again. I want to come see my nieces and nephews and come visit you. It would be awesome. Yeah. Well, okay. Be love to you. Love Bye. from New Zealand to everybody. Bye, everyone. Be in your body today. Bye. Love yourself. I'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.